I've been playing around a lot with animations lately, and I want to share with you what I've come up with to help me coordinate multiple animations at once and really fine tune their timings. Now, when I say animation, I really just mean a series of steps or a series of actions that I want to perform in order and at a set timing. And I'd like to coordinate these so that they play well together. For example, when the game starts, I want to be able to set the level up properly, handle when the drones are, are spawned and created on the screen, but also at the same time have a fade out and a fade in effect. So I'll show you right now. I just press space. I want that to disappear. It starts to fade out. It fades back in and we start the game. Similarly, when the player dies, I want to print this text. I want it to fade out. I want it to fade in, show another text, and then restart the level again. If I try to do all of this in, in one procedure, it got tricky and it got really messy. But I've come up with a way that I'm pretty happy with where I can have the fade out and the fade in uh, handled separately from putting certain text on the screen with timing. See, it shows up just for a second and then it goes away. So these are how I, uh, I do all these with what I call animations. Let's start from the end and we'll work our way back so you can see all the different pieces that I use to put this together. At the end-ish of every frame, every game loop, I check this maybe run uh, procedure. So on my game struct, I have three animations here, the begin stage animation, the fade animation, which is the fade out, the fade in, and the reset animation, which is called when the player dies and all the different things I want to do when that happens. Each of these is coordinated to work with the fade animation. So the beginning stage animation works, uh, the timing is set so that it works well with the fading. And similarly, when the player dies, what happens there is coordinated with the fading as well. So this is checked on every loop. Maybe run is simply a check to see if the animation is active. So here's an example from the begin stage animation. If it's active, it'll go through the frames, it'll grab the current frame, it'll perform the action for that frame, and every frame has a different action procedure that it'll call. And we decrement our timer, and when the timer for that frame is done, so it's run for two or three seconds, the timer is reset down here, and then the frame is incremented, so it goes to the next frame. And as long as we're still within our frames, uh, the valid frames for that animation, it'll continue to run every game loop. Otherwise, if we get to our end here, we just reset everything and turn off that animation. So I'll show you the animation struct first. We're keeping track if an animation is active, the current frame, the frames that are in that animation. And it's a dynamic array because every animation series has a different number of frames. So I couldn't use a fixed array here. We have our maybe run check that happens every game loop. The start function is what runs when we actually want to begin and activate that animation so that in that frame it'll start to render uh, beginning at the first frame. This each procedure is something I needed for the fade in and the fade out animation and I'll show you that in a moment too. So maybe run. What you can see on the screen right now is what happens when the player dies. So right here is where the player dies. We have a stage reset timer that runs for three seconds. And then once that timer is finished, that's when we start to do our, our reset animations and whatnot. The first thing that is shown though is that oh no text. We render that, that will last for the three seconds. Then when it's done, it'll stop rendering that. And we set is restarting to false so that we can run through these animations and no longer restart them in this part of the, uh, this part of the code. So reset animation is started, beginning stage, and the fading animation. So let's start with the begin stage animation. This one has three frames. At the beginning, I just reset the frame and is active. This is all within the create animations procedure, which is just run one time to set everything up in the beginning. When start is called, it basically just resets everything. Turns it on, resets the current frame. Maybe run, as I showed you a moment ago checks to see if it's active. If it is active, we run through the action for that frame. And here are where the frames are defined. This is the, the part where I would coordinate timings and, and find out what I wanted to do. So at the beginning of the game, when the player hits space, it starts this animation right here, as well as the fade out and the fade in animation. So the timing that I chose here for the first frame of not the fading part, but other things I needed to do, 
was uh, two seconds to coordinate with the fade out. I set the player to invincible true so that, uh, you know, if anything's running uh, like a drone would fire, nothing would, uh, would kill the player. There'd be a period of invincibility. The next frame, which would last three seconds, it starts to render the player by setting the health to one. And then I change the screen from the scrolling stars to the purple nebula that you see right now. That lasts for three seconds. Now at this point, the game is starting to fade in fully. And that's where, for one second, I set the player to invincible false, which means that we can start playing now. And once that uh, that is flipped, like really, this didn't have to be one second. This could be instant. I could just do target delta time right here, and it would work just fine as well. But I set it to one second just because. Now the fading one. This is what overlaps with the one I just showed you, as well as the reset animation when a player dies. This one is three frames. It handles the uh, the fade out, where I showed you in another video here, the alpha gradually increases, so the black rect gradually gets less and less transparent. Then the middle frame, where we keep it at total black for a second, and then we begin the fade back in of the scene, so the black rect that overlays everything starts to get more and more transparent. We do that over two seconds. So I was able to play around with the timing of this as well as the others to make sure that they worked well together. And it was really quite easy at that point. Now, unique for the fade in and fade out animation is the usage of the each proct. And I can define it here and call it right here within the is active check. I call each because this is where I want to actually render the overlay based on the alpha that was set right here. And I just realized that this each call is completely unnecessary. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and just put it right here. I like to keep things as simple as possible. Hmm? So that's the way I've been handling it so far, and it's working quite well. If you have other ways, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and I do hope that it helps. Cheers.